Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you hydrogen plant and storage in the Sahara. Desert energy is back. As the European Union sets its sights on a green hydrogen boom as part of its plans to meet decarbonization pledges and rebuild economies ravaged by the COVID-19 pandemic, North Africa has emerged as a possible source for a significant chunk of Europe's future hydrogen supply. A 2020 version of the European Commission's hydrogen strategy referenced a proposal that the EU could meet some of its future supply from neighboring countries such as Ukraine, as well as the desert regions of North Africa, which offer both huge renewables potential and geographic proximity. For a few years, Desertec generated hyperbolic headlines about the Sahara eventually providing clean power for the entire world. But the venture ultimately foundered amid criticism that it would have been an excessively costly boondoggle underpinned by outdated notions of Africa's natural resources being up for grabs by the rest of the world. Underestimating Europe's renewables potential, perhaps because of Desertec's decidedly mixed legacy, the idea of a renewable hydrogen superhighway between Europe and Africa has garnered a lukewarm reception, attracting similar objections to those aimed at its predecessor, mainly around cost and practicality. Preoccupation with the idea that Europe will not be able to meet its envisioned future demand for renewable hydrogen with domestic resources overlooks the potential for innovation and decentralized solutions, Bove argues. With these types of innovations, renewable hydrogen could be both produced and consumed locally without the need for huge plants or huge pipes. Pipelines or pipe dreams? This echoes concerns voiced by others about the idea of Europe relying on renewable hydrogen produced overseas and the logistics of transporting the fuel to market. As would McKenzie analyst Ben Gallagher has pointed out, hydrogen has low volumetric energy density compared to natural gas, which makes its transportation more of a challenge. It would need to be highly pressurized, liquefied, or, turned into ammonia, or, some other carrier, would have to be used, for transportation, Gallagher said. Currently, hydrogen is compressed and put on trucks, but that's for pretty small-scale distribution. It's never been done on a large scale. Konstantin Leboyanis, Hydrogen Europe's head of policy, agrees that a decentralized approach should be the first focus of the development of a renewable hydrogen market in Europe. But he argues that the huge numbers involved in the energy and industrial revolution the European Commission is proposing in its hydrogen strategy will inevitably require an outward-looking approach to achieve. On the question of how renewable hydrogen might be physically transported to market in Europe, Lavoyanis acknowledged that significant engineering would indeed be required. But the cost of repurposing existing pipelines to carry hydrogen would still be cheaper than building new ones and more efficient than trying to bring renewable electricity from say, North Africa into the EU in electron form, he said. The plan can bring Africa into the hydrogen economy. Africa would be in a much better situation and Europe would be in a much better situation if there was a cooperation between the development of renewable energies and to develop renewable fuels such as hydrogen, Roca said. And there will be will be spillover benefits, I'm pretty sure about that. Not doing it would be isolating Africa from taking part in the industrial development of these kinds of technologies. It is far too early to predict whether these factors will be enough to lead to the realization of 40 gigawatts of renewable hydrogen electrolyzers in North Africa piping fuel across the Mediterranean. What seems clear is that in official circles at least, there is a growing view that at least some of Europe's future renewable hydrogen needs must be met from outside its own borders. Already, moves are afoot to mobilize industry to begin finding ways to put the European Commission's plans into action including the launch of a clean hydrogen alliance to bring together key stakeholders. The EU is also gearing up on the diplomatic front, with commission efforts such as the Africa-Europe Green Energy Initiative exploring opportunities for clean hydrogen collaborations. As these ventures start to take shape and legislative changes begin laying the foundations for a future clean hydrogen market, a clearer picture should begin to emerge of whether the prospect of a hydrogen revolution substantially powered by the sun and wind of the Sahara is just a mirage or a solid vision of a greener future. That wraps up the video, I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay notified about our uploads. I'll see you next time, till then peace out.